Hello, this is Ben Holifield with ServiceNow with a quick demo of the Simple Separation app for ServiceNow. Uh, Simple Separation is available on the ServiceNow Share portal, which you can see on your screen now. What does Simple Separation do? Um, simple Separation is a simple application that allows you to segregate the data in your ServiceNow instant, instance on a, um, a per table basis and based on a number of conditions. Um, you can separate data so that logged in users only see records that are assigned to their groups or that are in their location or belong to their company or their department. So here it is on the share portal. We already have this installed in our instance. So let's go over here and see what it does. Whenever you install simple separation, you're going to get this new app over here with one module called separation rules. If we click in there, the simple table will click new to create a new separation rule. So first of all, let's hop over here to another instance where I'm logged in as this user Acme Database. Acme Database is an ITIL user who only has membership to the database table. If they look at the incident table, click open here, they'll see that they have access to all incidents for all groups. This is every open incident in the system currently. So what we want to try to do is separate the incident table so that this Acme Database user only sees the incidents that are assigned to his group, the database group. We'll hop back over as an admin and let's set that up. So the table is incident. We can choose a separator field. Now, as you can see up here in the annotation at the top of the screen, the separator field has to be based on group, company, department, or location. Um, you can use any field, even a custom field you create, but it must reference one of these system tables. And if you try to choose a field that is not one of those, we're going to tell you that you're, you're choosing an invalid separator field up here. So you'll know. So let's pick assignment group. We have some more options we'll look at in a moment, but for now, let's just set this active and click save. When we do that, you'll see that we've generated a bit of script down here. This script is a before query business rule. Um, essentially, this is going to be used to intercept any request a user makes for data from the incident table, inject some queries to make sure um, they have the appropriate membership, and then return the appropriate data. So we scoot back over to this instance logged in as Acme Database. Now with this separation rule in place, let's reload the list. All of a sudden we see that we're only seeing those incidents assigned to the database group. Now let's try a different user and see if we have the same results. Let's try Acme Network. This is another ITIL user who is only a member of the network group. If we click Open Incidents and we'll see that all this person sees are incidents assigned to the network group. So it's working great. If we hop back over, let's look at some of our other, op other options here. Um, we have a selectively apply field. If we click this, we're going to get a choice to selectively apply this to only particular groups um, or departments or locations, depending on your configuration. What that means is that we can have the concept of what we'll call secure groups. For most groups, maybe we want to have their tickets um, universally available, but for database and network, perhaps, we want to lock those down and have those um, separated so that only members of those group can see them. If we click Save now, we can hop back over, logged in as Acme Network, reload, and we'll see that we're now seeing Service Desk, we're seeing software, hardware, we're seeing Network because we're a member of that group as Acme Network, but we don't see any database records. Those are still being separated, and we can only see those if we're a member of the group based on this sub selectively applied group filter. Let's remove those for now. Let's look at some other options. Um, admin overrides, of course, um, just tells us whether or not an admin overrides this rule. When this is checked, an admin will be exempt from the rule. When it's unchecked, an admin will also have this applied to them. We also have the concept of owner overrides. Um, this concept comes into play when, say, you have separated records, but there may be a specific instance where a user needs to see the record. For instance, right now we have all incidents separated by assignment group, but what if the person viewing the list um, is not in the appropriate assignment group, but maybe they're the person that opened the incident, they're the caller. In that case, they should still be able to see it. So we'll make caller an owner override. If we click save, scoot back over to this page, logged in as Atme Network. If we reload now, we'll see that again, we're separating. Um, so we're only seeing those assigned to the network group, but we're also seeing this one record assigned to the assignment group database. And that's because Atme Network, our logged in user, opened that incident. So they can still see that. We'll remove that. And what about visibility groups? Visibility groups are groups in the system who are exempt from this separation rule. 
if you have particular groups, um, admins or um, auditor groups that need to see everything, you can place them as a visibility group. Click Save. And now if we come back over again to Acme Network, who is a member of the network group, we'll see that this person can again see everything, including those database tickets, um, seeing everything. And that's because they're a member of that visibility group. And finally, we have this concept of customized query. If you click this, it just unlocks this query field down here. And you'll see this has been populating as we've been doing different things with these options. It dynamically creates the query. If you have a very custom query, you need to inject your own script. You can do so by checking this button. For now, we'll just save this. And if we hop back over, right now we got it reconfigured to just straight up data separation based on assignment group for the incident table. Over here, we'll see that is in play. We're now just separating. We can only see network because that's our only group. But say we want to look at problems, also a task table. But here you can still see everything, network, database, all records are visible. And that's because these separation rules do apply on a per table basis. You could have separate rules for incident, for problem, for knowledge base, for any table you like. Um, however, these do have inheritance. So for in extended tables, these will apply all the way down to all extended tables. So if we do it on task, this is suddenly going to apply to incident, to problem, to change, to catalog task, to anything that extends task. And if we come back over, we'll see that's the case. Now this user can only see tickets assigned to network. Same for incidents. So this is a very powerful concept. Um, because these are before query business rules, they operate any time a read action is placed against a table. So for knowledge base, for instance, um, the separation will apply on the customer view of knowledge base articles as well as the table view. Um, for reference fields, uh, like the user table, um, any place where you're referencing another table, the results that are returned by that reference field will also be affected by these before query business rules. So very powerful. Um, creating these is very effective security and will take effect platform wide. And uh, that is all for now. Thanks for watching and hope this is useful.